<clears throat> Miss Kathleen Sullivan. You may not know this, but Passover is a very sacred time of year for the Jews. It's a time of year when family and friends are joined together to celebrate when we as a people were freed by the goodness of God. It is a time of year when we make and eat the spiritual and symbolic food which sustained us in the desert as we wandered 40 long years, desperate and yearning for our promised land. The homeland from which we were exiled, only to be enslaved by the cruelest of pharaohs. It is a time of year when we give thanks that we are oppressed no longer, that we are now a free people, that we are a people strengthened by our diaspora, that we are a people made to absorb and to change the culture of the lands, all the while never losing ourselves, our God, our culture, our traditions. Maybe the reason you don't understand this is because your people have never been enslaved, have they, Kathleen? Hmm? Catholic people? Have they been scattered across the globe or systematically killed by the thousands? Hmm? Or what about the Irish people? Everybody loves the Irish. They always have. I think it's their accents. A a anyway, my point is I almost can't blame you for ruining the Seda I took days preparing. The one I slave over so I could celebrate the joy of triumphant liberation with my grandchildren? The one where my husband reads from the same Haggadah that my mother gave us for a wedding gift. God rest her soul. I almost can't blame you because you probably didn't know how important it was to me. I mean, how could you? Looking at you, you, you seem to be, what, 15 years old? You probably don't even know how to spell Haggadah. I bet you don't even know what a Seder is. You're, you're used to Easter with pastels and giant rabbits, which I never understood personally. Thing is, how were you to know that my husband was going to tell everyone about you at my Seder as opposed to waiting for any other time? How could you have controlled the clinking of his fork against the copper wine goblet that came over with my grandfather when he first came to America? What could you have done to stop him from raising a toast to the love of his life? whom he recently met on Staten Island at a dental hygienist job fair. What could you have done to stop him from telling everyone, including my children, my grandchildren, and even that terrible girl my grandson brought home from college, that you were his beshert or soulmate? Because I'm sure you don't speak Yiddish. And that he was divorcing me so he could marry you. What could you have done? Nothing, not a thing, Kathleen. I don't remember much about that last conversation with my husband. My daughter said I fainted after he left. But what I do remember is that when I came to, I was surrounded by people, my family. It was in that moment of utter humiliation that I realized the only one who abandoned me was my husband. Not my children, not my grandchildren, not even that terrible girl. Even though I was alone for the first time in 30 years, I wasn't by myself. So I got up and we continued on with dinner as if nothing happened. Nothing had changed. And then after dinner, we got drunk as families sometimes do. And we talked about what a little tramp you must be and what an ass my husband is, because he is. One giant ass. <laughs> but he's your ass now, Kathleen Sullivan. Muzzle tough! <laughs>